Hey everybody, welcome to the Svalbard YouTube channel, and today I'm going to talk about the lateral keys. This is one of the questions I get asked the most. People are always like, oh, what about those lateral key motions? I'm not used to wiggling my fingers side to side. How does that feel? Um, the short answer is, it feels good, but it's a new motion that a lot of people haven't used much, and it was part of the original data hand concept that it turns out works really well. You just have to adapt to it a little bit. So I can show you how all of these motions work. So the center keys, the home row is just like any other key, right? The south keys, again, similar. The north keys, just little upward motions. And the inward laterals are quite straightforward. Each finger moves pretty well independently in that way. And to the extent that they don't, the bracing of the hand really helps with that. And there's just some, some adaptation over time. If you can do uh, Live Long and Prosper, and go into this position instead, if you can move your fingers in between these two positions, you have enough lateral control to type on this device. And this is something that you gain over time as you uh, adapt to it and practice it. But overall, you know, each finger does have a degree of lateral freedom. There is some coupling between them, some sympathetic motion between them, as you can see with me moving my fingers here. But because the hand is resting, and because you do have the ability to lift one finger a little bit while another one is moving, uh, flexion and extension and lateral motion are, are independent in the hand. You can also lift your middle finger a little bit while your right ring finger comes in. So you can see it's like when I do that motion, my right ring finger moves inwards and my middle finger is actually up a little bit. So there are a lot of degrees of freedom in the hand here that we're not used to exploiting, but or at least not used to exploiting consciously, but which actually make it pretty straightforward to adapt to. Preferences between people on the different lateral keys vary. Some people have a strong preference for the index laterals, so they actually really like the index outward lateral. It's pretty good. Middle, not too bad either. Most people hate ring finger outwards. I personally hate that key, have always hated it, so I bind a, an obscure utility layer there as a hold. Um, and then the pinky laterals are actually pretty good because um, you can use a little bit of the wrist movement, you have a little bit of the finger movement, and the inwards feel really, really nice, especially if you set up your rig so that the clusters are rolled to bias for the inward motions. So overall, you know, you can expect to, over the course of, you know, the first couple of weeks of using the device, you'll find that the center keys, the south keys, and the north keys are perfectly intuitive. And then the inward keys, because they are not what you've used previously on a regular keyboard, aside from the positions of uh, G and H on QWERTY here, for example, um, they'll take a little bit more time to adapt to. And then the outward keys, most people don't like as much as the inward keys, but keep in mind, the amount of motion that you use to hit an outward key on a Svalbard or on a data hand device is so, so small. It's not reaching with your pinky over here, right? It's a couple of millimeters. You can barely even see it given where the camera is right now. And the amount of force is also incredibly small because it's a 20 gram switch with a magnetic breakaway. So it's only 20 grams at the start and it falls away super easy. So that's what lets these keys work really well. Um, that's what makes them feel so tactile. And that's what lets you use them all day, every day, if you have to, without getting fatigued. And that's really the, the great innovation of Data Hand. And it's one of the reasons that it solved my problems with RSI, in particular carpal tunnel stuff and ulnar nerve issues from reaching with the pinkies. And it's one of the reasons that I've continued this project because it really provides a unique solution for minimal motion, minimal force input. Thanks for watching and check in next time. We've got a bunch more little videos coming.